Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at Stack Exchange Redis, which is the client library that we're going to use to communicate with Redis, the I distributed cache interface and its importance, how it all ties in in ASP.NET Core, and what trade-offs are you making essentially. Let's go ahead and dive in. All the links are in the description. Stack Exchange Redis, right? A library built by Stack Overflow, the company, and it's what makes Stack Overflow so fast fast oh, it looks pretty fast uh, anyway you got the command here to install it go ahead and set it up get it from the nuget package manager uh, the library itself kind of as an overview it basically gives you all the functionality that redis has okay so anything that you can do with redis you can do it through this library in the previous video we've taken a look at how you may want to interact with redis as you've seen you got to do sockets, you got to work with streams. It's not the most pleasant experience and it is going to take time to develop it. However, you're going to have an in-house solution if you do that. That means you can tailor it for yourself. So the biggest advantage there is it's yours. The biggest disadvantage there is it's going to take time and it's going to be hard to get it right. And time is a valuable resource. So this is a pretty reliable solution that it's maintained by Stack Overflow. That company is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's open source. So you basically get a free win here. So you will need a lot of convincing of why you actually want to roll your own solution here instead of using this package. And yeah, you can do anything you want with it. We're not going to cover everything. Uh, you can go towards like extreme performance with this, or you can go for distributed caching and more general approach, which we're going to go for. Obviously, between distributed, easy distributed caching and uh, high performance distributed caching, there is a middle ground, which is a little bit hard to nail with this library, which we're not going to be taking a look at. We're going to take a look at the easy approach. If you want to take a look at high performance and maximum efficiency, you go on that journey on your own, you know what you're doing. Otherwise, we just want to get set up and we want to learn about distributed caching. So get the package name, Stack Exchange Redis, downloaded, basic usage. We want to connect to Redis, get some values and voila, right? So I got my LinkPad script. Obviously, first thing, make sure your Redis instance is running right there, right? So let me close that. Uh, yeah, let's get the Nugget package. There's that. Bada bang, bada boom. And it's installed. Okay. So let's just copy some source code because um, that's how development is done in 2021. We just copy paste. Uh, and then we get the database, right, from this uh, Redis connection. And then we can interact with it. So connection multiplexer, again, if you want to read about what multiplexing is and stuff like that, they have more information about how the library functions. But again, by looking at the implementation and uh, taking a look at it very intimately, you are skewing towards that end of performance, etc. We are going to take a look at more of a general approach. We are interested in, I want to have a key and I want to store, store a value in there. Okay. And that's the simplest thing that we could go for. And that's what we, where we're going. So we're not going there. If you want to go towards performance and high optimization, uh, explore this on your own. Basic usage, connect to the server. Here's our connection. We create a connection. We get to the database and we are just going to string get and we're going to get our dog. Uh, let's put a semicolon here. I'm going to do the same with cat. Okay. There's our Billy, there's our Rex, uh, pretty standard stuff. This is the same as we did with the CLI and the same that we did with our implementation. We're just basically passing a key and we're getting back a value. There is some additional stuff on there or it doesn't matter that much, right? Uh, not right now, at least. So the biggest thing that I want to, you to take away from this is that this library allows you to go for that high performance. You get DB, you basically, you have your get hash sets, uh, you have uh, your sets, you have your lists. So understand that Redis isn't just a key value store, it has data type support. So if you need to store data types, and this is where I, I say that you can go towards performance, optimization, and uh, hash sets, lists, and sets, they all have their, their own trade-offs, and this is like a whole 
computer science uh, data structures and data types uh, module essentially right so it's a, like a one year well not really one year course you could probably do it in like a week or two to understand uh, all the trade-offs here but it's uh, too long of a topic to cover here so again uh, hopefully you understand why we're not going there it's a little bit of a long journey and it's very situational most of the times you just want to get the quickest solution if you are ever in a situation where you need to go this way you're already in a big team you're working on a very specific project you have professionals on your side and you're already kind of like a professional yourself so if you want to go there i highly recommend you do but you have to do that journey on your own very simple get again you could probably imagine db sets explore these commands if you want to find out how this works we don't need to create a service ourselves to dependency inject this in our ASP.NET Core application. Uh, again, you could imagine that store many different data types. So there's many different ways that you can adapt this to your application in all different situations. In danger of repeating myself too much, I'm going to remind you we're going for the most simplest thing. What Microsoft gives us is the Stack Exchange Redis extension. So let's go ahead and add a Nugget package. Again, we're just gonna type in Redis. The first thing that shows up is Stack Exchange Redis. There is Microsoft Extensions Caching Redis. This is the old one, we don't want this. And then there is Microsoft Extensions Caching Stack Exchange Redis. This is for newer versions and uh, this is what we wanna use. I'm gonna link the source code uh, for this in the description, but let's go ahead and add this. And internally, it does just use uh, Stack Exchange Redis. So the library that we just look at, Redis uh, Cache is the implementation for it, so you can look through it. But uh, the important thing about Redis Cache is it's a I distributed cache interface. And we're gonna talk about the significance of this interface in just a second. Otherwise, let's go ahead and commit this out and we will just instantiate a new Redis Cache. Let's get this class in here. Uh, this is a new Redis cache. It's going to need some options. All right. Um, you can basically supply configuration in here. This is what you're going to specify in your dependency injection. And this is what's going to get passed to the instance. Okay. So let's take a look at the service collection extension. We have the action. So you're going to create a builder. The builder is going to run against the this instance. So you're going to essentially do this. And then you're going to register an I distributed cache with Redis cache. Okay, so nothing too crazy. What I want you to understand here is how this implementation differs from this one and what it does internally. Okay, so let's just change this to distributed cache just to make a point distributed cache that we're using an I distributed cache, not a Redis cache, right? So we're using an interface implementation. So cache, let's get string we're going to get dog. Okay, let's go ahead and dump this value. And we get a wrong type exception. So uh, what is happening? Oh, why did we get a wrong type? Did we not, were we not able to get the dog by using string get here? What is different here? For this, we're going to need to go into the internal implementation. So redis cache, we're going to look for a get method. And internally, all these get methods, they go to this get and refresh function within uh, the class. So let's jump there. And here we will see the hash member get async. This is an extension function which basically uses the hash get async method. And this is basically storing a hash map. So if we do age get, we basically need to supply a key and a field. So it doesn't start, it doesn't just do key value storage. It does a little bit more. Uh, you're, we're gonna see what it actually stores in just a second because we're going to take a look at this in reverse order. But another thing you can spot about this, which is a little bit funny, you can see all these little like little to-dos sprinkled around. So if you do this in your code, don't do this. Come on, that is version 5 now. Nobody's going to... Version 6 is coming out. Nobody's going to do this, right? So anyway, uh, two lessons there. Uh, leaky implementation and uh, to-do sprinkled all over. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a back-to-front approach Instead of uh, get string dog, what we're going to do is we're going to set string, ret, and bob. Let's run that. Uh, let's actually bring up the CLI. 
and let's find out what we're looking at. If we try to do a simple get rat, that is not going to work same well as it does with our get dog. Uh, it's not that we're getting the wrong key, we're getting the wrong type, right? So we do have something there. So let's take a look at the source code again. It is using the hash member get async and uh, we can actually take a look at h get. Uh, we can use uh, h get all or we can get a specific field. So for example, let's do h get all, we'll do rat and here we'll see everything, right? So if we want to get the data of a rat or essentially Bob, you can see here you have a sliding expiration and absolute expiration not set. So it's just minus one. We're going to use h get rat and data and we get Bob. That's internally how this Redis cache implementation works. Again, the, I'm mentioning this because if you go from one implementation and uh, you will use it for one or two years and you go to the next one, careful that stuff doesn't break, okay? You may need to flush all your caches and reload them. That might take time. Uh, it's a, you know, a bit of a like, uh, when there's need, data correction needs to happen, it's a, not, a, not a pleasant process. But for us here, it's uh, pretty straightforward. We, on the surface, we don't really notice uh, this whole uh, hash map malarkey going on, right? So if we just uh, uh, get the rat and let me just dump this so we can actually see the value, we'll get bytes. So let's, um, let's get string instead, right? So we have Bob. Lessons here. If we want to go for a more simple approach, which we're doing, we're going for the iDistributed cache. Understand there's a little bit of a leaky abstraction here. So this is not directly trans uh, translatable to this. Okay, so you need to have a little bit of a foresight if you want to do that or if you want to go from this back to this. Okay, next is the iDistributed cache interface. Uh, why is it actually called an iDistributed cache interface and what's the significance of it? So iDistributed cache interface is an interface giving you by, given to you by Microsoft. You can think of it as kind of like a standard, right? So if you have a memory cache implementation from long time ago, the iDistributed cache is the default that's provided to you. So you can actually just swap this out for something else. And the thing that makes it distributed is the fact that you return byte arrays and you store byte arrays. The You will see that the get and set strings are not here. They are extension methods. I don't know if we can take a look at the implementation of this, but essentially it will encode it back into a byte array as well, right? So it will either get a byte array, return it as a string, and the same thing will happen. Uh, let's come back to the iDistributed cache interface. And the reason the byte arrays, uh, getting them and storing them, makes it a distributed cache is the fact that it breaks object reference. Okay, so if you have a memory cache and you're storing, let's say, animal objects, when you store the animal object and then you get that object reference from memory, you're still holding a reference to that object in memory. Having a byte array essentially breaks that reference. You always get a value. You cannot get a reference to an object. Okay, so you cannot mutate data in your cache. You can only write or read from it, okay? You cannot sort of update, well, writing is updating to it, but you're not indirectly updating to it, okay? You're not referencing memory in there. You're just getting a value, which is what the byte array is, okay? And that's what makes the, makes it an I distributed cache. So if you are implementing cache, implement this. Cool, uh, so we got this. Uh, we took a little overview. Again, remember, performance, possibilities, uh, but uh, complexity of implementation, simplicity and easy win uh, for more or less safe implementation. That's, uh, let's say, ba battle tested. Uh, I've battle tested it myself. It's, it's okay, it's okay, right? It's not, not, not a disaster. Uh, let's go ahead into here. Uh, this is a really simple application. Again, pretty minimal. I've just added controllers. I have a home controller here. I'm gonna hit it and we're just gonna see the cache do its work, right? Get it in here, add it. Uh, let's F4 here, yep, we have this thing here. Now let's go ahead and do add stack exchange Redis cache. As we've seen before, we're gonna have a config. Okay, and in here we specify the config so we can have your instance name is the key prefix if you specify it. 
So you can have two applications targeting the same Redis server and they can have overlapping keys. As long as you specify the instance name, they're never actually going to collide, okay? So just understand that. So configuration, let's again, just specify our well-known port and stuff like that. And there we go, right? So then from services, we get our I distributed cache, cache, and we're just gonna return, okay? And from cache, we're just gonna get, we're not even gonna use async, we're just gonna get the rat, okay? Just get the rat. And do dot net run. Uh, let me just get into the actual project directory. There we go. Let's open this wrap. And we're gonna see a byte array rendered to characters. Uh, straight, get string, uh, yes. Um, it's unfortunate I need to do dot, oh, dot net watch run. Yeah, there we go. Let's refresh that and we're gonna see Bob. So hopefully that paints a clearer picture for you. You can, you have a Redis server, you have a client that interacts with it, you register that client and then you surface it in your application. You can build a bespoke client, which is gonna be tailored to you, but it's gonna be very hard to build and time consuming. You have this middle ground implementation that's already been implemented by Stack Overflow and you have the option of going very, very optimized, but then you're very, very tied to this particular library and particularly Redis. Okay, this ties you to Redis and this ties you to this library. You don't have the option to migrate to something else because you're tied to the hash map support, you're tied to the list, to the set, and all the types that are relevant to this Stack Exchange library. I distributed cache, you are only bound to Microsoft and the I distributed cache interface. This allows you to swap clients as long as they implement the simple interface of I distribute a cache and again, as we talked about it, it returns byte arrays, so you never have to worry about depending on some other objects and it's always gonna cut the object reference and this is a base type in C-sharp, so you're not introducing any other code or wrappers to be able to interact with this, right? So this is the simplest pos possible uh, approach with the highest yield or highest benefit, essentially. That'll be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, all the links are in the description. Don't forget to join the Discord server. If you have any questions, ask the questions there or in the comment section and see you in the next video. Have a good day.